My brothers and sisters, what is going on, everybody? Still Sermon in the house on this Sunday night with another video. Currently watching uh, Bengals-Ravens. Not that it really matters for us right now, but uh, yeah, just figured I'd watch an actual good competitive uh, offensive duel. But uh, yeah, like I always say, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Links are posted in the box below. So... I really didn't think I'd be making a video like this as soon as this, but two things. As I said, I'm watching Bengals Ravens, watching two young quarterbacks and Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow just, you know, draw their deck of cards, lay down their hands, and just execute. And I see it with other teams too. I see it with Kansas City. I see it with the Chargers. I see it with uh, Philly right now. I even see it with Dallas, even though they don't have Dak Prescott. And they're better off without him, actually, in my opinion. We've seen it with uh, Aaron Rodgers for years. We've seen it with Tom Brady for years. And uh, we've seen it. Now we're, now we're kind of seeing it with the uh, Rams, and we're kind of seeing it with... Uh, Arizona, and we especially saw it today with Buffalo, you know, you know what all them teams have in common, they all rebuilt right, and they all put in the correct pieces, and they all developed strong offenses, so that's the first thing, and the second thing is just that th this team, I, I, like I said, I didn't think I'd be making a a video about this as soon as this, but here it is. I mean, this team is just not good enough. You know, I, and I knew coming into the year that there were, there were going to be issues like this. But I didn't think they'd be this bad. You know, you figure you come in with a veteran quarterback who's proven that he can be capable of being a starter. You have all these weapons at receivers that need time to grow, but they have a very high ceiling in the league. Some of them are still kind of young and haven't reached their potential. And we all knew the offensive line was going to be a problem this year, but the pass blocking's been real good, and the run blocking has been hideous. And it's just a game like today just really gives this fan base a kick in the ass that this team... And this franchise just needs to rebuild. We need to gut it down from the bottom. Take what we have right now and the guys that we know are going to be key to this team in the future. Like Kenny Pickett. Like Najee Harris. Like George Pickens. Personally, I don't see Chase Claypool here in the near future. Pat Fryermuth is going to be here. Deontay Johnson is going to be here. Most of the O-line is probably going to be here, but that's a big concern. The Steelers are going to ruin Najee Harris if they can't get him a better O-line. And I don't know how much longer we can keep using that excuse for him because this guy had 1,200 yards on the ground last year in his rookie year behind that run blocking. And so far this year, he's on pace to have over 1,600. But... It's just that he he's working, when he has to work every bit of his might to get a good run, to find a hole, that's a problem. And I credit Najee Harris so much for it because he is a workhorse. His run blocking is just, isn't just doing, is just not doing him any favors. So you have the guys that you know who are going to be key to this team in the future. And that's why you got to build around him. And now, I'm not saying, oh, we got to build around George Pickens. You never, ever build your team around a wide receiver. We learned that the hard way with Antonio Brown. Do we build it around Najee Harris? I don't think you build it around any kind of skill player. You need to build it around Kenny Pickett. And if the Steelers are confident that Kenny Pickett is the guy moving forward, I still think he can be the guy. But... He still has not had a passing touchdown yet. 
I mean, obviously, it's a very small sample size. It's only been a game and a half for him. But still, he doesn't have a passing touchdown. And his slate doesn't get any easier because next week we got to go up against Tampa Bay, who have one of the best defenses in the league. The point I'm trying to make is that this team is just not good enough. And we knew that coming into the year. You know? And it showed, and against a team like Buffalo today, where it's a Super Bowl contender and a Super Bowl favorite going up against, for what's all intents and purposes, a mediocre team, it was uh, humiliating to watch, to say the least. And we, and you know, I mean, you're going, obviously, when you go from, you know, a Hall of Fame, uh, in my opinion, a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback in Big Ben for 18 years, and you uh, transition that to a rookie quarterback, obviously, it's going to be growing pains. But this team just needs to rebuild altogether, mainly on the offensive line. You bring in a couple wide, a couple other wide receivers, and they, you know your team's all set. And we don't know how much longer that can take. The defense especially needs revamping as well, because this pass defense has been hideous, and it was on full display today. Minka Fitzpatrick getting absolutely roasted today. James Pierre, I don't know why he's back there returning kickoffs. But uh, he kind of made up for it where he uh, downed the ball inside Buffalo territory, but it didn't real inside, uh, yeah, inside Buffalo's own territory, but didn't really avail too much in the grand scheme of things. Akella Witherspoon's been a disappointment this year. I don't think he played today. I think he was ruled out for this game. Um, Devin Bush, less said the better. That guy just can't be a part of this team in the future. I mean, that guy, you want to talk about a guy who gives no effort to this team at all, that's Devin Bush. Um, Terrell Edmonds, I don't think he's going to be part of this team in the future. You know, I wouldn't get, you know, I already wouldn't have given him a fifth year, but apparently we're going to give him a fifth year and he's still on the roster. I mean, you look at this team, there's just no way possible that you can convince me that this is a Super Bowl team, let alone a playoff team. Now, yes, in my initial prediction, I said that we could make the playoffs. I said that we could be the seventh seed in the AFC this year, but that's only if everything absolutely falls into place. And needless, And to put it lightly, it just hasn't. We're off to our worst start through five games since 2019, which was also a pretty bad year when you look at it half uh, glass, half empty, half half full. But at least you had an excuse for 2019. There's no excuse this year. So, you know, I mean, I, I've been rambling on for long enough about, you know, just the what this team has done the first part of the season. So I'm just going to cut to my main point. We should be 0-5 right now in what's for all intents and purposes a rebuilding year. Because if Zach Taylor challenges that missed touchdown in week one for Jamar Chase, Bengals beat us despite uh, sacking Burrow seven times and picking him off four times. Then we lose to New England. Then we lose Thursday night to Cleveland in humiliating fashion. We lose last week to the Jets, and now we get absolutely dismantled by the Buffalo Bills today. And really, if you look at it, all the opponents that we played today, they have something going for them. I mean, the Bengals, I mean, everyone's been saying, oh, they can go back to the Super Bowl this year. You know, with New England, they were high on Mac Jones, and, you know, hope, hopefully he's okay, but he's going to miss the rest of the season. But New England still has a stout defense. Cleveland, I mean, they should be a contender once Deshaun Watson gets back and they still got Nick Chubb running it down people's throats. The New York Jets, I mean, they're 3-2. and two. The Jets are 3-2. and two. They have something going for them right now. They blew out Miami today. And then Buffalo, no explanation needed. This team just can't compete with legitimate teams. 
So this is why these next couple of drafts have to be really important for Omar Khan. This, I'm telling you, 2023 and especially 2024, those, those drafts are going to make or break Omar Khan as GM for this franchise moving forward. Because those drafts are going to show if he's capable of scouting talent, if he's capable of just being, if he's capable of realizing this team's needs in the long run and realizing what we need to build on. And we need offensive line, we need better pass defense, and we need a couple more slabs of cement as far as the skill players go. And when and then when your team's all set, you can possibly be a playoff team. Because you look at the talent on this team, you think to yourself, hey, the Steelers can be a pretty good team this year. Or we can be at least competitive this year. We've shown we can be competitive. But when injuries galore happen, and when that trash can known as Matt Canada sitting up there in the booth calling the shots, that's what's killing us. And this needs to be Matt Canada's last season as offensive coordinator. Like I said in my post game earlier today, this is one where you can fully blame it on Canada. It really is. Because I don't know why you're just not letting Kenny Pickett be himself. You're down five scores to this Buffalo Bills team. They pretty much just resurrected you from the dead, and now they're just taking a piss on your grave at this point. They're beating up a corpse. Let Kenny Pickett be himself. And instead, you're still rolling with your same scheme that you've always had. This needs to be Matt Canada's last year. You need to stop with these in-house promotions, and you need to hire from outside the organization, Omar Khan, Rooney's. When you talk about a rebuild, I'm talking about new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. Well, you can't say that yet because this is just Terrell Austin's first year, but you get the point. If this was the first step of a rebuild and you bring in Terrell Austin as your defensive coordinator and you have Brian Flores helping him out, then you do it next year and get a new offensive coordinator in the system. I get that we're not going to get rid of Tomlin. I understand that. But when you talk about rebuilding, and you know I'm always an advocate of you don't fire a head coach with a rookie quarterback because then he has to learn a whole different system. So we're not going to completely rebuild, but the Steelers need to have several key pieces look different for 2023 and beyond because if that don't happen, you are going to ruin Kenny Pickett, the guy that you were confident enough to pick at 20th overall to be your franchise quarterback in the long run. And so far, everyone's trash talk on him is looking correct. I know it's only a small sample size, but you need to be able to build around Kenny Pickett if you're that confident that he's your guy moving forward. And that's why this team needs to rebuild. Because looking at how this team plays, you can't convince me that this is a playoff team. You just can't. Not with this roster and not with this coaching staff. You know? It just stings me, man, because when I look at the Steeler teams from 2014 to 2018, it doesn't even feel like it was in the short-term past. They feel like they were from years ago. You know, and I'm looking at possibly the worst Steeler team that I've seen since 2003, which was the last time that we had a losing season. And this is, a, this is definitely going to be Mike Tomlin's first losing season as a head coach. I can tell you that right now. Because nothing's going to change as long as the personnel of Tomlin, Canada, and a rookie Kenny Pickett are there. Maybe Kenny Pickett can turn, some, can turn some heads next year, but I'm not expecting him to do a whole lot as a rookie. I just want him to develop so that way he can look competent for next year. Because after all, he's going to be our quarterback of the future, right? Build around him. And make this franchise whole again. And that's why we need to rebuild.
I've seen so many friggin' teams in the league turn their franchise around in a year or two. Philly, Dallas, Cincinnati, Baltimore, Cleveland, the whole AFC North I just listed. You know? Tennessee, um, LA, Buffalo, Kansas City. The list goes on and on. I've seen so many teams just turn their franchise around. And as long as Tomlin keeps his stubbornness and complacency, this franchise ain't going to rebuild anytime soon. And that's really all I got to say. Just coming on here and talking about observations that I made and thoughts that I needed to put out as I was watching Bengals Ravens. And that's all I got to say. Let me know what you think down below. Steel Sermon, checking on out for the night. May God be with you all.